Welcome to Build. I'm Rihanna Dillon and we are live from London. Today I'm joined by three of the stars from the play Our Town, which is currently on at the incredibly beautiful open air theatre in Regent's Park. Please welcome Carl Collins, Arthur Hughes and Francesca Henry. Hi. Great. Very yeah. well, thanks. Yeah, yeah good. Really the good. sun's shining in it London is. town. It is. Thank you for coming along to this. Thank you for having um, us. If you've got a question, please do tweet us at Build Series LDN. Or if you're watching live on Facebook, then comment below. So, guys, you're like, what, halfway through your run now? You've had a week and a half performances? Yeah, I think it's over half now. We've, we're, oh, in really? our, we're in our final week. Oh, yeah. God. Uh, How's it been going so far? Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah really, really. Even really if we say so ourselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us a bit about our town. Well, it's um, it's a play uh, written by it was Thornton Wilder is the playwright. It's written in 1937 or 38, Eight. 38, <laughs> close. Um, and it's quite uh, different to a traditional kind of play. I think for that time, you'd American classic play you'd expect. It's kind of it's set within the theatre you're watching it in, mm -hmm. and uh, it's almost like it, it, it's like a case study on life. It doesn't it, the kind of plot is not particularly kind of a classic American plot. It's, uh, it's more taking a look at and asking quite big questions about, about life. It's very beautiful. You won the Pulitzer Prize for it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite a different play, I think, for its time. And I think it's, per it's performed so much in America. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like the the Thornton Wilder is seen as their sort of Shakespeare in a way. Really? It's yeah. an yeah. American classic that's done in all the high schools and universities and stuff. So lots of people who come and see it, oh, I studied this in college. Yeah, yeah you can see people, when you have American people in, you can see them mouthing the lines. Really? Back because yeah. they know oh. they've done this play <laughs> inside out. Yeah. And, and they love it. Had you heard of it before? No. It's not just me. No, no. no. <laughs> I, had, I had a friend um, that I went to school with who's American, and she called me when I got this part crying. What? And I was like, what's wrong with you? Well, she real? was like, honestly crying because she she's so in love with, with the play and and <laughs> my character she, she was overwhelmed by it. i was like okay that's really lovely so how did you get cast in it what were the auditions like or did you have to audition well oh, oh there she is oh, yeah. um <laughs> uh yeah uh well I, yeah i auditioned um back in i guess it was probably march or something mm -hmm. when i met uh, ellen the director and i've worked with ellen before oh. um on my first job and she got this play um and we had a conversation about it and she was like, I'd love you to, to come and do it with me. And oh. sort of we read it and it was, I don't know, it was... I mean, it was, it was right. Nailed it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and for, uh, obviously, these two are fantastic in it. Mm -hmm. um, and for, thanks, a uh, <laughs> bit, bit, bit louder though. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for it to be Francesca's second job, is that right? Mm -hmm. Out of um, wow. drama school, it's just like fantastic to be performing, playing a lead, on the open air stage at Regent's Park is just phenomenal. I mean, fully deserved, but it's great, you know. It is really. I mean, incredibly impressive. And it's, it's a really meta play. We're sort of watching a play that's aware that it's a play. There's minimal staging. There's sort of like yeah. stadium-esque seating. And it's narrated by a stage manager. Mm. Um, yeah. So what effect is that designed to create? I think it... The play wants the audience to be very active. Mm -hmm. And I think every time you get lulled into a sense that you're watching a play and, and you're watching a story, she snaps you out of it. That's true. Yeah. And she asks you to think about what the actors are trying to say with that scene, what, what we're trying to, to provoke you to think about. Mm -hmm. And I think you can see the audience every time we break the fourth wall all the time and look out at, at you mm -hmm. and, and make eye contact and ask yeah. you to, to listen and, and, and actually think about what the stage manager is talking to you about. And I think um, that's the point. What, what is that like for you guys? Because obviously you can actually see mm. the audience mm -hmm. because it's light. You know, it's not yeah. like, you know, obviously in the theatre it's normally dark, you're sort of presumably squinting. And <laughs> you're kind of seeing all the reactions, you're seeing the faces. Does that sort of, are you watching the audience? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, watching you watching you, really? Yeah. 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 And it's, it's terrifying. It's, <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. I think initially once you got over that, it's, actually, it's quite nice actually because the way the... Uh, the set it the set is almost mirrors the seating bank yeah. where the audience yeah, are true. so we're sitting on like these bleachers with seats in so it's like and we're watching what's happening on on, the, st on, on the sta stage yeah on the stage so it's like it kind of gives the impression of this full like coliseum type arena yeah. with the way the set is so we're almost like mirroring the audience members so it's everyone 
looking in, watching. So when you can you can see the audience members' reaction, but it's all it's this real inclusive like. It's so, almost so. We should round. say as well that we're on stage the whole, the whole time. Yeah. Way through yeah. play. Yeah. And you come in and out of scenes, but you then you take your your seat and watch. And we take our seats as ourselves rather than our characters. Yeah. Which and there are certain amazing. things that happen yeah. in the seating as well that are part of the action. So then we are we stand up and become the characters again. But then when we're sitting in our seats watching the action on the the flat stage, being... we're sort of observing as ourselves or a heightened awareness of ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So how does yeah. that sort of help with the, because it is all about a tiny community. Mm. How does yeah. that sort of constantly being on stage help with that sort of community feel? Well, it focuses, it focuses us all, but it also, I think, reflecting the audience, it also focuses the audience as well, because when the audience are watching, and I suppose when they're looking at us in the bleachers, but we are focusing intently on something that's happening in the, in the space, I think everyone is sort of honed into that, mm -hmm. which I, which I, I mean, the way I observe it, because I, I watch that, and I also watch the audience watching that, and it really does feel like everyone is on tenterhooks for what's, you know, yeah. What I love about your character, Carl, is that you're introduced very early on as the doctor. Yeah. Um, and so there's like a, an immediate sort of trust there with you. Um, and you're sort of, I don't Gorgeous. know, you sort of feel like you're sort of pinning this community brother. together. Tell us a bit more about his place. In Sorry, the I was looking at myself here. I know, you that question. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about uh, your character's place in the play. Um, well, he's the doctor of this small town. And uh, um, a doctor in a the community then, and uh, to a a lesser extent now, I suppose if you come from a small village, you probably know your postman still, you know your doctor and, you know, the, the person who runs the shop or the pub. But in that time, the doctor is like a focal point for a small place. So he knows everyone, everyone's story intimately. And, and he's also the person that everyone, even if you're not ill, you may feel like you can offload to because... The doctor knows everything about you, so it just makes sense that you would. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's he's got a, a good good high standing in the community. Um, within the family setup, Arthur plays my son. Yeah. Within the family setup, he ha uh, and there's so there's so there's my wife, uh, Pandora. Um, Colin plays my wife, and then there's my son Arthur, and then we have a daughter, um, Miriam Niarco. Um, the father within that space is obviously usually seen as this kind of, you know, the, the, it's a patriarchal society, obviously, and the, 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 the sort of um, the ruling hand. But in our family setup, he still has that, but it's actually a very, a very equal um, relationship. Yeah. Um, but there's always, you always feel that he is um, uh, a central figure within this within this tiny community, and mm -hmm. I mean, and, and having said that, there are other characters within the piece that are come in and out. But the other family, because it's it's ostensibly about these two families, right? Mm -hmm. So the other family, the the father in that family is the the editor and owner of the local newspaper. So again, a very central figure to a small a small community. Mm -hmm. They're like pillars of the community, really, yeah. aren't they? Like the exactly the, the person exactly. who uh, you know creates the newspaper for so everyone can know what's happening and then the pastoral care from the doctor. It's quite nice mm -hmm. that they're both families are both so integrated. But I suppose yeah. every character in the play is has their like role in this tiny community. Well you two sort of join the the families together, don't you? Because you have like the yeah. The romantic arc between you, George Gibbs and Emily Webb, um, and it is a gorgeous arc actually because you see them from children through to adults and falling in love. So, what is the best thing about sort of playing them throughout their sort of lifespan, and what did you find the most challenging about that? I think the best thing is playing them when they first fall in love or they first realise that there's something about the other person that they've this is like never no moment. Before. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's so nice to play. I was saying the other day, when we, the, we, oh, same shirt. When they, they gave me this shirt. I don't wear it in the show now. <laughs> Capsule wardrobe, it's great. Um, when we, uh, when, when the play opens, I'm, I play around 14 and Arthur plays about around 16. And, and those opening scenes are, are very, Giggly and hello, Deer nice headlights, to meet you, sort of thing. And there came a point where we were in rehearsals, like, are we doing too much? Like, right. is this is this believable? Is mm -hmm. this weird? And there's a girl um, in our play who's around 
16. And I, in lunch breaks and tea breaks, I would like poke her about her boyfriend, <laughs> her about Instagram things. And she was honestly, her reaction, I was like, no, I'm not doing enough. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, she's like, Ramp it up. She, she can't look at you. She can't maintain eye contact. She can't say his name. Oh she giggles, God, she, she gets it. all hot. And I was like, oh, okay. And that, that's been really fun because I completely forgotten how ridiculous it is to be a 16 year old girl. Yeah. Yeah. God, thank God I forgot mm -hmm. what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> that was a yeah, dramatic yeah, yeah. time. What about you? <laughs> Yeah, um, I think, yeah, the, these younger moments of I I initially, you know, trying to figure out how to speak to each other and what, you know, it, because I think that when they s start kind of, you know, recognizing each other, it's a, such a crucial, I think it spans maybe kind of like a three year period, three, four year period when they start to fundamentally change as people. Mm -hmm. So they start kind of getting their moral centers m much more, uh, you know, affixed to what they how they're going to be as people. And there's th this scene, actually, this is, I think, one of my favorite scenes in the play to, um, uh, you know, to performing, because it's the scene where we uh, approach, you know, each other as, you know, I, I like you. Yeah. I, it's this thing that's been there since they've known each other. And Emily gives George me kind of, you know, the dressing down of, y you've been a bit of a, you know, you got have, too big for your boots. Yeah, you've yeah. Been, yeah, you've been stuck up. You've been like this, and I haven't said anything. But actually, now I'm going to say it, and it's a real like whew, back to <laughs> earth, and a real yeah, a real kind of wake up call. And it's, it, I, you know, I, I think in their life, it's one of the biggest kind of moments at the end of this scene in mm. their life. So, I, you know, to have these moments of just like such important points in your life. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Just the bravery that it takes to actually look someone in the eye and yeah. say how you feel. Yeah. We don't actually do that very often. Mm. Um, yeah. And they are moments. Even as grown ups. Yeah, and yeah. they're moments that change, like they set you on a collision <coughs> course for, for your life. And, and it's really beautiful to be able to do that every day. What I love about, because I'm at that point, I'm sitting in the bleachers right. as a member of the audience. And what I love about that is watching the audience watch that scene, because it's, it's my favorite scene. So I'm watching, but I'm also looking at the audience. <laughs> The reaction and honestly it's it's the best because you see people just willing them to say the words that they want to be together they love each other and honestly i see couples doing this all the way through <laughs> Until they're literally in each other's there, laps. There were newlyweds, I think, on. sitting in front of me. And oh, really? every time, every moment in your relationship, they kept being like, <gasps> to each other. It was so <laughs> cute. You were like, ah, every yes. moment. Yeah. I was like, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it, was, it was really lovely. Uh, what do you do when it rains? Has it rained yet? And what would you do if it rains? Oh, um, it's, it's, it's barely, we've had a bit of... A bit of drizzle. bit of drizzle. drizzle. Drizzle's okay. What about like a full... Outpour. We did have a moment um, where it did start pouring, and the In show the was yeah. And the show was they we sort of take a break and we wait for the rain to pass, and then okay. they sort of sweep the. the I think the theatre the they, they organise it so they can get more money at the bar. <laughs> so they we, so they we put go a call in the man upstairs and they say, "Come on, gates are locked <laughs> and the bar is double." Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but actually, there's a there's, but, there's quite a beautiful thing that happens when it rains if it does pause, but the audience. You're going to open air theatre. I think people get people come it's prepared, exciting. Yeah. and it is. Yeah, it's like, oh, will it? You know, what, what, what's going to happen and now? And there's a lot of rain jokes in this play as well, oh, yeah. which lands very well. So when many it's raining. Yeah, yeah. One time we came off uh, back on after the rain had stopped, and it's just reference after reference of the rain, <laughs> and the audience were loving <laughs> it. Hysterical. But it really kind of galvanizes you with the audience because you've all been through the rain yeah. together. Yeah. And we're, you know, we're back on, we're, and now it's finished, and we're going to finish the play. There's, a, I don't know, there's a real kind of tr a triumphant sense, I think, <laughs> of going back afterwards. Because, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. You've just got to go along with it. And that, actually, that was one of the most special things. It shows, was, I think, I think like, the, my yeah, favourite yeah, performance. The uh, uh, absolutely. There was a real, like, resonance with coming back and doing it after it rained. So. And the yeah. thing is about being outside, like, this space is a lot more relaxed than traditional yeah. theatres. It's light. It's we're all on stage it's very the whole time. We make contact it? with mm -hmm. you. It, it's it's not like a normal theatre experience. It's not stuffy. No, it's so really so not. that sort of experience just makes it mm. 
You like, can bring your drinks in. Yeah. 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 You, Snacks. Yeah, you, you come in with uh, daylight, really. Yeah. And as the play moves on into the more darker, uh, you know, t tones of it, uh, the dusk is happening around you. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's it's w such a poignant lighting change. Uh, <laughs> it's a perfect play for yeah, outside, yeah. actually. Yeah. Totally exposed, out within nature, as, you know, uh, the sunlight goes down. It, it's that really, really special. Yeah, actually. it's really fitting, I think. And what there's so many references to that, isn't, isn't yeah. there? The, um, yeah. the the being in the in the wilderness and in the yeah. great outdoors. Yeah. They talk about the birds and they talk about the sun coming up and the weather. Change of the seasons. Yeah, Change yeah, of the yeah. seasons. What about the planes though? How do you deal with the planes oh. over here? Oh, they're, they're just gotta shout a little looking. louder. <laughs> do you know who the tiger in the zoo is 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 Yeah, he's the one likes to pop <laughs> really? up. Yeah, at the end. He loves a he loves a roar. Great. <laughs> oh my god, I yeah. didn't I didn't just hear pause the tiger. for him to have his moment <laughs> yeah. and carry on. One night he he roared about six times just in succession. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. I didn't think that was I've never heard the line. Have you, not, have you not heard him? I yeah. really listen out for him, but I can yeah. never hear it. I'm so gutted. I love that. Because <laughs> you're concentrating hard in your character. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're so in the moment. Um, <laughs> what aspects of the play do you think feel like m most relevant for a current audience? Because obviously it was set around the sort of turn of the century, but. I, I think, Load, like, yeah. Oh, well, you first. No, I just, I think it's, I mean, and, and you know, what are your reasons for doing any play? And uh, I think. There always has to be some sort of relevance to the, the time you're living in now. I think it's such a universal play that doesn't feel like it's aged at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was really ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, with the aesthetic of the piece, which is very, very sparse, yeah. you know, the, the stage manager at the beginning says, there is no scenery. Or in Th Thornton Wilder describes at the beginning, I don't want any set, I don't want any costume. This is how it's to be played. That's why you're in those clothes. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. His own clothes. And it, costume, wasn't, it yeah. wasn't so much of a statement then because he was writing about 1901, 1911 in, in 1938, but now fashions have moved on so much more that it's even more of a statement. Yeah. And even more of a, of a challenge to what you think theatre should be. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's quite exciting. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, so, no, go on, go on. I just, that's one of the uh, main points of the play is taking time to stop and look at one another and look at what mm. you have and look around, which, you know, you can walk around and look at people at the moment, you're just completely lost in your phone or, or you know, not, I, I think just more than ever today, this uh, notion of just re remember to stop and look and pause and appreciate things uh, is so relevant. So. It's my, one of my friends came to see the play and she said, it's one of those things, you know, people say pics or it didn't happen. Yes. Mm. That yeah. thing about I need to document this moment, but not because I'm living it now, just because well, I want to go home and rewatch it. Mm -hmm. And 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 the, this, this play is, God knows how many years old, and he's saying back then you're not paying attention in the moment, so and we've only got worse at paying attention in the moment. So I just feel like mm -hmm. time has just compounded his message, mm -hmm. um, and my character has sort of that realization as the play goes on, and every night it's it's I'm struck again by how not even relevant how necessary that message is. Mm. I think now. That's a really good point, actually. I hadn't thought of that. I think yeah. that's giving me a whole new angle on it. Um, this is obviously like a dream gig for an actor, like a beautiful play in the park in the summer, but are there any other roles in other plays that you've kind of got your eye on or that you would love to play mm. one day? Oh, wow. Oh, I think Francesca's got one. Go on. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Might as well put it out there. Yeah? I'm a big Dirty Dancing fan. <gasps> Oh my god! And I know I'm not baby, and I will never be baby. But uh, you could definitely be baby. I, I was fishing. Can, can Thank you, you. Can you dance? I can learn. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just my 13-year-old self. Just uh, still I mean, that's screaming. literally the point of dirty dancing. Yes. So I love that baby. baby. Well, baby. I mean, I have to say this: this beard and this mad hair. Mm -hmm. It's all about the character. Not really. This is just a, a shout out to the producers of the Game of Thrones prequel. <laughs> so I feel like you might know, have missed your boat there, Carl. I'm afraid. No, the prequel. They're, they're starting the prequel now, aren't they? So here I am. Look, beard. I, I come with my own beard and hair. So. <laughs> nice. You can grow your own hair. Excellent. That's always what you want. <laughs> and my own teeth, obviously. Sure. Um, oh, I'm not too picky, really. Yeah. I, uh, good. Yeah. I. I um, <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm, I am available and <laughs> versatile. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't really know, actually. I think there's, there's so many, there's loads of things I'd like to play. And sometimes you don't really know until it makes itself available in yeah. front of you. I, uh, so, um, oh God, there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of like Shakespeare I'd like to do. There's mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, you know, loads of things I'd like to do. But uh, 
I, I don't know which one to There's pick. Not one, yeah. <laughs> I, saw, I saw your uh, brother, Johan, in Small Island recently oh, yeah. on stage yeah. at the National yeah. Theatre at the moment. Yeah. Do you still get to go see each other in performances? You oh, try and make each other. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen it three times already. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, and it's brilliant. I would have loved to be in Small Island. I mean, yeah. I'm just a few, two year, few years too old. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's really brilliant. Um, and we do, we do see each other. I, I recently did um, a play Nine Night in the West mm -hmm. End. That you came I to got see. tickets for my brother. Oh, uh, did you? See it, yeah. Did you see it? I didn't. Oh. Uh, I know. You missed Paul was very good. I feel like I was <laughs> very good in that. And then I did another sh a play last year, Shabin, which he came to see. You know, we support each other in that way. You mm -hmm. know, which is great. And he's he's got a great career. I love his career. Uh, but um, no, he uh, yeah, he's a, a a good support. Do your parents still come and see you? Like you know, on like opening night, are they kind of there? Like oh, my mum's down opening. this weekend. She's here to see the show tonight. Amazing. Yeah. I love that it's so sweet um everybody does really need to go and see this film what are you guys what film theater mm. what are you guys working on next i think in my head i was like are you working on a film mm. <laughs> i'm about to go off and do midsummer murders <gasps> <sighs> did i do it though oh my um, god yeah i've i've yeah i've never done it so that's yeah. really fun i feel like that's like a something yeah. that everybody needs to <laughs> every actor needs to do in there yeah i think so i think so i mean it's been going for 21 how is there anyone still alive in that village i mean <laughs> yeah i know i know i know yeah it's like yeah there's no one lives there it's just ghosts <laughs> why would anyone move there <laughs> that's true Where is, the crime it? Rate? is it like rural oxfordshire or somewhere yeah they, oh. sh they film it in buckinghamshire and the chilterns okay, so yeah. i presume it's meant to be like midsummer you know. isn't it isn't it gloucestershire is that a place is that a real place i didn't know if it's a real place is it does anyone know? <laughs> no idea. Literally. It's Summer Norton. Oh. Oh, I don't know. You I said that was <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought, okay. Yeah. <laughs> no idea. Um, yeah, what are you guys up to? Um, I uh, so I'm I'm on the Archers on uh, Radio Four. Are you? Uh, I'm such yeah, a big yeah, fan yeah, of the Archers. Yeah. Know that. So I play Rory, who is um, the son of uh, That's... Charles Aldridge. Oh my god. Um, I knew you were in the Archers. I didn't know you played Rory. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, for about yeah, about uh, recent reasonably new to it about mm -hmm. seven eight months so i've got um i've got a little bit going on with that yeah uh, and then i'm uh appearing yeah. in the, at the almeida theater in a uh, vasa okay. and you um it's a gawky maxim gawky russian play uh yeah which will be in october i think amazing yeah. Um, my producer just asked me if I was fangirling because <laughs> you're in the Archers. I was like, yes, I really am. <laughs> I really am. My mum was. <laughs> I bet my mum would be as well. <laughs> we must get that a lot. It's, it's a really, it's a really nice gig. The oh, Archers. They're, they're all so lovely, and it's a, it's quite a fun part to play. <laughs> <laughs> um, unfortunately, that is all that we have time for with Carl, Arthur, and Francesca. But you can still catch our town at the Regent's Park Open Air Theatre all this week, head to their website for tickets. And we're back at four o'clock with a very special Love Island panel. Uh, this is all that we've got time for on Bill. So one last time for the cast of Our Town, please give a massive round of applause.